events that you that you have given to us to continue the leadership and the guidance of the world. Continue to use him and anoint him and his precious life. We pray today that you would speak to us in a very mighty way. Let wisdom and revelation come to us. Open our understanding. And Father, we will not fail to give the glory and the honor to you in Jesus' name. All right. And our text, we want to look at verse 5 this evening of the book of Ephesians chapter 1. We will read from verse 1 to 5. But verse 5 is where we are going to of Ephesians. That's a powerful book. It could change your life if you follow my instructions. Ephesians chapter 1, we'll take from verses 1 to verse 5. We, uh, let's read. Uh, let's read together, if you can. This, or oh, let me just come out of the New Living, and I'll go straight to the King James, because I know most people have the King James. Paul, an apostle, an apostello means a sent one. Paul, a sent one of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, see, an apostle sent by God to the saints which are at Ephesus. Saints, sanctify ones, set apart ones. That means you have to be exclusive. The, the word for church, ecclesia, the called of ones. I want you to know how important you are. Doesn't matter how you feel, what God says about you, right? To the faithful in Christ Jesus, verse two, read with me. Grace be to you. Grace be to you. That means unmerited favor. We are people of divine favor is upon. Some people are saying, oh, God bless me. We have divine favor upon us. What God wants the church to do is to accept it by faith. I am not what I feel. I don't need another prophetic word to function. Right? We are in verse 2. Grace be upon you. That means the favor of God is upon every one of us. Grace be to you and the peace. The Greek word is, is Irene. That's one of the names I give to my, sec, uh, my third daughter, the Christian. Um, Irene, peace. Grace be unto you and the peace. The, the, absence, the absence of hostility, the absence of uh, 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 of you had God who was an enemy with us, and there's an absence of that. We are the children of peace. Grace be unto us, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So we have grace and peace, and that grace, favor, and the ending of hostility, the peace of God that comes in times of trouble, the peace that calms you down, you see, that's, it's all, all the benefits we have. We are grace. We are people of favor, peace, the cessation of hostility, and the peace that comes into our heart, that calms us in the time of trouble. If ever there's a time there is need for this kind of a peace manifested in our hearts, it's now. Grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This peace doesn't come from the earth. It's not born of human effort. It's a peace that comes, the peace of God. That calm, that Jesus was able to lie down in the middle of a storm while the boat was sinking. And when the apostles were saying, give us down now that we are perishing, Jesus said, be not afraid. What is peace for your money? Peace. That even when all hell break loose, there's a peace, there's a calm, there's a serenity. Peace, peace, the calm that comes from God. Grace be to you, peace from God our Father. Peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Then in verse 3, that's the favorite one, 
blessed that what you will get oh blessed means that uh, it means that we blessed be the god and the father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us so in verse 3 we ought to bless the god and the lord jesus christ and the word blessed is eulageo from which we have eulogy it means to speak well of when we worship god we are speaking well about him we are telling him how great he is how he's wonderful how we love him when we bless god we speak well of god when he bless us he does well to us so we have, it says in verse 3 blessed be the god and the father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us but not some with all spiritual blessings in the heavens all could you imagine that god has emptied his blessings upon us all that god has and all that heaven contains is upon every one of us and yet many of us are asking god oh god bless me do you know how blessed we are what god wants us to do is to begin to accept it and to begin to walk with that knowledge begin to feed your spirit and your mind with the truth of his blessing that is what builds your self-esteem that is what builds self-confidence that is what builds that kind of an assurance and make you as bold as a lion. And so we're running through it as, uh, as we revise. We are blessed people. We have all blessings in heavenly places in Christ. What's in Christ is given to the church. That's why the Bible says all things are for us. That's why the word of God says that we are reigning in life now. We are reigning in life. But most believers, you move by what you feel, you move by your five senses, and you move by what by your, uh, your happening, your circumstances, and you're in trouble. Look in verse 4. We're running now. This is where we have been for quite a while. According as he had chosen us, ek lego, ek lego. Remember those two words? Ek is out of, lego means to say. That's one of the words most of us trainees should know that somebody holy and say, Lego man, <laughs> Lego. That's a Greek word. Lego means I say. So the idea here, what it's telling us, God has chosen us, and this choice came through a call. You see, your call selected us via a declaration, a calling. Many of us, through the voice of the spirit, is calling. The act out of Lego to speak, to say that God is calling out to the spirit. No man comes unto the father unless the spirit of God draws him. It's a call, a selection. Through eternity, his voice has gone through. Time, space, and eternity, a declaration to everyone saying to us, you have been called before the the." Kata balon. Kata is down and balo is to throw. The throwing down of the, not the earth, but of the cosmos. That's the Greek word there. For, before the universe, before time began, before the galaxies were created, God's calling started coming to us. You know, if we really start feeding on these truths, it will change us. The renewing of the mind is what brings transformation. This is how you renew your mind with these truths. How blessed you are, how rich we are by God. Now in verse four, it go on to say, he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Why did he choose us? That's the objective. Is that, this has nothing to do with one save, always save, well, uh, some God saves some and others will go to hell. This is not dealing with that. It has nothing to do with that. What it is saying is God's call to us is an eternal one. And it occurred before time started. And there was a reason why he did it. Why did he call us? Look at the clause, the purpose clause. Look at this. Why did he do it? That we should be holy. 
set apart, right? Exclusive for himself, chosen for himself, that we should be holy and without blame. We went through the scriptures on the fact that we called to be holy. Last week, we went through several of most of the scriptures dealing with the blamelessness one. I think we covered most. Uh, I was trying to, we looked at Hebrews 8, 7 to 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 8 to 9, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 22 to 23. We throw in Hebrews chapter 8. I think I'd given everybody those scriptures last week. Hebrews chapter 8, 7 to 10, right? You look at Ephesians chapter 5, 26 and 27, that says that he might sanctify, mean to set apart, and cleanse it, that's a church, with the what? The washing of the word, the washing of water by the word. The word of God washes. The word of God can cleanse us. The word of God brings refreshment. Do you know that? They say when you eat a meat and they feel refreshed. God's word, when you begin to meditate on it, it's not who lay hands on your head. Somebody lay hands on you, you will get up. The sensation will be lifted. All right? But the word of God, when you begin to nourish yourself with it, it does amazing things. It does amazing things. So we want you to begin to understand this. So Ephesians talk about that he might present it to himself. No, let me get that. Verse 26 of Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it as a church with the washing of water by the word. Right? And then we look at verse 27, that he might present it to himself. You see verse 27? The purpose why he's doing all of this, that he might present it, that's a church, to himself. A glorious church. I want you to see what he's doing. Verse 27 of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27 is a powerful, dramatic event. As it's even what we're seeing here in verse 27, and, and those of you listening, that he, Christ, he Christ, I want you to see this, like a father takes, will take his daughter down the aisle and hand the bride over two hands into the, the potential husband, the groom, and present her before the minister for marriage. This is what is happening in verse 27. Christ died on the cross through his blood. Why did he do it? Look at verse 27. Everybody, please read verse 27 with me. Read it with me, please. And I want you to read it loud so you can hear yourself. What verse 27 says? That he might present it. We'll go back to, go back to verse 26 and we'll read them together so you will see the context of verse 27. That he might present it. He, Christ, will present it. No, verse 26 will give me. That he might sanctify, that's Christ, sanctify means set apart, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, that's the church, with what? The washing of the water of his word. To so the word of God that declares what Christ had done is what brings that cleansing and washing to the church. This is the power of the word, not your emotion. Verse 27 says, read with me, that he, Christ, might present it, the church, to himself, a glorious church. All that he did, washing us, cleansing us, sanctifying us, setting us apart, is what? To present it to himself. What kind of a church? A glorious church. Take your pen and underline that word, a glorious church. This is not going to happen. It's not when, I, when Christ come, everybody would have gotten it right. No. Christ has done this already. The church has to open its eyes, open her eyes, open her mouth, and begin declaring to herself, 
I am part of the glorious church. I am presented to God through Christ's blood as one. Notice the words, a glorious church, read, not having, not having what? Spot or wrinkle or any such thing. No spot, no wrinkle, no any such thing, but that it, the church, should be holy and without what a blemish. The way in which people have to grow to develop a, an immunity to, against sin is when we take this word of God and begin to renew our minds with it. Christ did it already. We have to enter into that truth and renew our mind with this revelation. And that's how you, you, you inculcate this principle into your spirit, which brings about that kind of a, you know, immunity, where you develop the kind of a spiritual immunity that when you begin to do things you used to do, you feel convicted. The things you used to do, it's difficult to do it now because the word of God has now inoculated you. Through Christ, we have no spot, no wrinkle, or any such thing. And that if the church would be a holy church without blemish, we are without blemish in the eyes of God. We now must begin to see ourselves, not by what we feel, not through the eyes of other people. It matters not what anybody says about you. Who would you believe, a liar? Or would you believe what God is saying to you? And the devil could use people to impress you and convince you that how what their conclusions are is the truth. Who would you believe? What, what God says or what man says? Huh? God says, my son Jesus shed his blood to present you to himself as a glorious church. How does he see you? A glorious church. A church without a spot. That's how powerful the blood is. The blood erased, removed, plunged, cleansed, purified us. And we are covered with the blood washed us, cleansed us, and we are given the righteous garment of Christ to cover us over. I want you all to meditate on these scriptures. Huh? Take your time. Pull aside alone by yourself and feed on these truths. We went we through Colossians chapter 1. We won't go through all of that again. Verses 21 to 23. Uh, Philippians chapter 2.15, we cover that as well. First Thessalonians chapter 3 and 13, we cover that as well. We look at Luke 5, chapter 1, 5 to 6, at the parents of John the Baptist, how they were righteous before God, walk, uh, they were what? His wife and daughter of Aaron, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord. Blameless. We can, when we get this truth into our spirit, it will be easier to live a holy and a blameless life. That's our reality. We have to renew our minds and then we begin to realize how blessed we are. And you can enter into that. Walk in the truth of what Christ has done for us. Philippians chapter 2, uh, we read that as well, all right? So now we are in verse 5, and we're introducing verse 5 to 9. Turn to verse 5, and verse 5 tells us, everybody, let's turn to it, what it says. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children, the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Let's read verse 6 as well. To the praise of the glory of his grace 
wherein he had made us accepted. He had made us accepted in the beloved. Two verses we're going to look at tonight. Verses 6 and 7. Verses 5 and 6, rather. 5 and 6. And 5 says, having predestinated to predetermine in advance. The actual word pro, P-R-O, O-R-I-Z-O, pro or rezo, pro before, and it speak, pro is, bef it is before, and or rezo is a boundary. Marking off a boundary in advance, setting limits on the life of a human being that God has determined in advance. What is his limits? Is mark on us, God. We are a marked people, predetermined before time began. We shook, We looked at verse four. Why he selected us before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blame. Now in verse five, verse five. Let's read verse five. Having predestinated us unto what? Why did he predestinated us? Now we are seeing another clause. Here we are seeing. Another purpose clause. Why did he predetermine, Brother Mitchell? Why did he determine Noella or Susan, Krista, Sister Bonat, Joyce, Man of God, Pastor Stephen, Sister Agnes, Sister Borneo? Why did he mark us off in advance? And this is what I always want you to get. Don't just run through a book. Pull out the key truth in every verse and feed on it. Be fed. We run through all those scriptures dealing with we are called unto holiness and unblameable, unblameableness. We run through those scriptures. Now we're looking at verse 5. Why? According to verse 5, God predestinated us, predetermining our destinies in advance, why did he do it? That's the question. What's the clause? What is the purpose clause in this verse? Having mark us off in advance, for what purpose? Unto the adoption of children. The adoption of children. Do you know what that means? And if you look at the verb in the middle voice, chosen for himself, look at what it says here. He marked us off to be adopted sons or children. Here you have in the, in the King James, adopted children. In the Greek is two years. Ready, sons. You know, there's no sex distinction in the kingdom of God. There's neither male nor female. So if you're called a, a son of God, don't be offended. When the King James put children, but two years adopted God through the blood of his son adopted us into his family. If you were to do a proper research, Right? If you were to do a proper research, you know that the Jews, let me just read, hold on, I, I left my book. Yeah, let me just go and pick it up. I was looking at, hold on, a piece of a commentary made by Ralph section and Yes, and this is what he said here. I want you to write down the, the proper spelling of that word, adoption of sons. It's not children, huh? It's actually, the, the Greek word is kyriothesian. It's made up of two words, right? But the, I want you to get this. H-U-I, write it down. H-U-I-O. H U I O, the H is really in the Greek, you know, no, no H. It's a rough sound that gives an H 
sound, all right? And um, Q-U-O, that's H-U-I-O, Q-U-O. And then you have the other part of the word is T-H-E-S-I-A, Thesia. Q-U-O, Thesia, in the Greek. In the, the actual word is Q-U-O-S, if it is a noun. Q-U-O, Thesia is a verb, right? So the, the, we are, when I hear the Greek word Q-U-O-S, it speaks of son. Here in the Greek, it says adopted sons, right? We are uh, adopted. Are you hearing me, Sil? If you hear me, show your hands because uh, my, my headpiece wasn't fully charged. If you hear me, just raise your hands. Good, I see your hands. Good, right? So, Cuyosasian means a son, the adopting of a son. A placing to place, the idea of to place into a family, adopted into a family. Among the Jews, this wasn't, um, Jews were not heavy into adoption. It was more practiced among the Gentiles, particularly the Romans, right? So the idea here to place signifies the place and condition of a son given to one to whom it does not normally belong, right? Let me read it again. It signifies the place and condition, the place and condition of a son given to one to whom it does not naturally belong. So it's just that you're adopted into a family you were not biologically produced, right? I and mean, you know, there are a lot of horror stories of adopted children or you have people who by the state, uh, like in here in America, there's an organization called DIFAS. They have its organization that deal with issues of children, abuse, and, and they are very drastic. Any issue with your kid, they, they only have to hear that child had no food and they come and they're going to take that child from you. And they're going to place you into one of those homes, right? In some cases, some people adopt the kids if they love the kids, but it's not an adoption. And there are cases where people adopt kids and then abuse those children. The children are treated as second, uh, second-hand citizens in the world. They're treated as strangers. In the here. In, among the, the Romans, how many of you all ever saw Ben Hur? Raise your hand. The film Ben Hur. Raise your hand. Remember the guy, Charlton Heston, with the horses? They had a race with the horses. Uh, if you were to look at Ben Hur, I would give you all an assignment. I want you to study the movie. If you could go and get it and view it, and you will see Charlton Heston when he was um, accused of attempting to hurt the governor who was now coming through a procession in the street, Charlton Heston and his family were wealthy people. And they was a military young man there who grew up with him, who, was, who had just returned from those expeditions those wars and so forth, came back in himself and Charlton Chad Heston had grown up together. And when he came in, assuming a large position in the army, big position as a commander, and he wanted Charlton Heston to spy on the local Jews. And now Chad Heston said, I can't do that. He turned enemies with him. So when the governor was coming into that area to assume his position, and the soldiers were bringing him him and they were having a parade through the street. Heston was on top of his built of his house, looking over. And as the commander came in close proximity to the house where Charlton Heston lived, Heston leaned over to take a good look. And his hand moved one of the tiles on the roof, and it fell off the roof into the street of the incoming governor and the horse on which the governor rode 
leaped up into the air and the governor fell off the horse and they ran into Heston's house to investigate. And he showed them it wasn't intentional. There was there were loose tiles. And as the governor was passing it to get a better look, he leaned over and one of the loose tiles gave out. They arrested him, his friend, because he was angry with him that Heston had told him he would not be a spy. And they were thrown into prison. He was thrown into his prison, his mother and his sister. And uh, they subsequently came down with what we call, um, what is that? Equivalent to our, um, what you read here, walk in the street. Uh, um, not, not, oh, give me the word. Uh, you you had to walk and 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 and, and cry out. What, what protest. What was it? Well, protest. Le leper, leper, leprosy. Lepers. They became leper lepers while they were in prison, and he was placed on a battle ship in the bat in the bowel of the ship. You know, there are no engine men had to row as a rower. And while he was there, the guy was leading that ship. The governor, the, the, the head uh, captain, or is a powerful guy who came on the ship, saw him rowing, and he was amazed with the strength that man had. Right? And he subsequently kind of liked him and told the guy who was leading the rowers, take the, the shackle off his feet. And subsequently, one of the invading um, the army that they were fighting against ran into them and blew up the ship. And when they, this military gentleman realized that the ship was on fire, he told himself, but he's finished. And he was going to kill himself. And, Heston, knock him out and control him. And not too long after, another ship was on the horizon. Actually, the Romans had won the war. And it was because of Heston saving his life. He subsequently adopted him into his family as his very own son. He didn't have a son. And when you become an adopted son, your name will change. You're given the name of that family to all the things that that person own and possess what's yours own. If you watch the film, you see it. He was given a ring that identified the status, changing of a status. And, and it was an official ceremony attended by the who of who in society, who showed up. This is what we're dealing with in this in this particular portion of scripture. When the Bible tells us that we have in verse five that we were adopted as who yours, who yours the seer, adopted sons or children of God, meaning that we our status has changed. In the other verse four, it tells us that we were selected before the universe was established to be what? Holy and without a blemish. Now in verse five, we are introduced to a further blessing. The blessings of becoming the very adopted sons and daughters of the living God. You know, sometimes we read the Bibles, how many of us really believe? That we are children of the God of the universe. Sons and daughters of God. Listen to me. In the true sense of the word, we are royalty. We are royalty. And the definition I was giving you signifies the word to place. Right? Akin to, there are two words we want you to get in the word. Right? The placing because the word tete me, the two words, curious to 
tasia. Tetemi means to place, right? To place. So it means to place signifies, you can write it down, signifies the place and condition, the place and condition of a son. Remember, there are no sex di uh, di di distinction. They neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ. The placing of the condition of a son given to one to whom it does not naturally belong. We were sinners, lost, undone, called strangers, foreigners, and enemies. That was our former status. Now we are called what? Sons, daughters of God. You have to begin to realize that you are a spiritual dignitary. That you are a prince. Maxwell, you hear me? You are a prince. Michelle, you are a princess. If you were to use our earthly distinction in terms of sex distinction, male or female, the church must begin to allow this truth. Just don't allow it to be a doctrine in the Bible. You have to lay claim and accept it. I am a daughter of God. I am a son of God. I'm a joint heir. We're going to come into that. That you, prior to that, were called a Gentile dog. Do you know that? John 1, 12. As many, he came unto his own. John 1, 11 and 12. He came unto his own. That's Christ. Came unto his own, the Jews. But they received, the Jews received him not. But as many as receive him, to them give you power to become what? Sons of God. Who are you? I'm a daughter of God. I'm a child of God. I belong. It doesn't matter what, what you have been through. As you walk through the vicissitudes of life, you have to begin to realize your value that God is saying to you this evening, you are my very own. You are special to me. I adopted you through the blood of my son. You became my child because my son, became, I placed him on the cross. He became sin with your sin, who knew no sin. Why? That he might be, we might become the righteousness of We might be made the righteousness of God. I want you to understand that. Don't just take it as a tight little one. You personalize. If nobody wants to believe it, you should believe it. You should begin not through what you feel, not through an emotion. The vast majority of God's people are moving by emotion feel anything, they sense anything. That's why we are losing out. We are guided by human emotion. I want you to take some time and study this. Huh? To place signifies the place and condition of a son given to one a son or a daughter given to one to whom it, that child, did not previously belong. This word is used by the Apostle Paul only. Make a note of that. Right? Make a note of it. This word is used by only the Apostle Paul alone. This man was given insight insight into the revelation of the gospel. No other apostle was given the depth of revelation as Paul did. Yeah. You know who said that? God told him that. When he had a thorn in the flesh and he was praying for the thorn to be removed and the Lord told him, no, I'm not going to remove the thorn in your flesh. And he told him why? 
He said, least thou become puffed up above measure. Because of the abundance, hear it, because of the abundance of revelation which you have given. The abundance of what? Apocalypse. The man had insight. Apo is from. For Luke 2 is the removing of a veil, moving of a curtain. And when you move that curtain, you see everything that's behind it. No other apostle was given the extent and the depth of the revelation as the apostle Paul. And the Lord saw the potential of him becoming proud. He saw the potential of Paul becoming intoxicated with his own sense of self-importance. We are adopted. We are the children of God. Don't use it loosely. Lose it with surgical precision. Know that you belong to God. If you had a father who despised you, if you were subjected to impoverishment, poverty, if you Unlike others who were read in the lap of fortune and luxury, now you can declare, I am blessed. You can say with all assertiveness, I am what God said. I am a child of God. I am of a spiritual heritage. I have royal blood flowing through my veins. This and change the way you see yourself. And it should. Adopted sons and daughters of God. That's a powerful designation. A huyothesia. Huyos. Adopted through the blood of Christ. Through the sacrifice of Christ. We, God has now sons and daughters. All of us who accept Christ. We are accepted into his family as his very own children. Brother Maxwell, what do you think of about that? Tell me something. What do you think of that? What, what is that saying to you? If you could unmute yourself, you can, or anyone. The word of God is saying to you, you are an adopted son and a daughter. That is a, that's amazing. That's very, uh, I find, that is phenomenal, uh, Pastor. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Get the word of God into your spirit. Krista? Get this into your heart. So just don't read the Bible and put it down. I showed you how Jesus Christ, through his own blood, took us and brought us to the Father, present us as a father giver is giving away his daughter, present us to himself and to the Father. As a child without a spot, without a wrinkle, or any such. How many believers are not taught enough of this? That's why many walk with their heads down on the ground. That's why that is why demonic powers can make you carry guilt as a load. You become like a donkey that carries load. The enemy put load on you. Make you feel guilty. There are two sides of this, you know. Grace is not given to live in sin. It's a grace, the favor of God that delivered us out of darkness into God's kingdom. We are translated or transferred from one kingdom into another. We are in the kingdom of unrighteousness, which is the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of righteousness. We have become vaccinated with the grace of God, with the blood of Jesus. We have immunity against sin. You fall short, 
you'll feel even when sin comes on you, you feel uncomfortable. This is amazing. Adopt it. Now let's look at some of the scriptures. I was looking at uh, so in, in Ephesians 1 and 5 what we are looking at having predestinated us mark us up in advance set us apart why did he do it what is the purpose that we will become adopted children for himself it's very own through the blood of Christ, through the sacrifice of the cross. Without the cross, without the blood of Jesus, this would not have been possible. That's why when you have church service, you ought to have a break long session. When you come before God, that's why the Bible says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we come into the presence of God, we ought to be telling Him how much and thank Him for it. You should have a break long session just. Going crazy, praising God. Honoring him for the sacrifice of his son that made this adoption possible. Made it possible. Right? So the Greek word adoption is huiothesia. H-U-I-O. Thesia. From which you have titimi, which means to place. To place. Place. Pastor Thompson, Pastor Thompson, do that yeah. one over again. Tell me, take it slow. The, the, the Greek word, uh huh, H U I O, H U I O. Yeah, it's a sound, it is an H sound. How you pronounce it? Q U, okay. Q U, right? Okay, good. Thank you. Q uh, U, and the other part is the seer. Q U, the seer, right? Or if it takes by itself, Qo is in, is the verb form, and the other the noun form will be qios, qios, which will be a son, the placing of sons and daughters. Spell spell for me the last one. H u i o, t h e, s i a. That's qiotasia. Okay, That's good. It. Thank you. Right. So qiotasia is the Verb, curios, H-U-I-O-S, is the noun, right? So you are curios, you, 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 you are a son of God, a son. Curiosia, the placing of a son to adoption, all right? So this word occurs three times. In, in Romans, and it means literally, the term means placing as a son. The term means placing as a son or as children. Placing as a son or children. We are adopted because of the blood of Christ. We are washed because of the blood of Christ. Placing, becoming God's very own sons and daughters, right? So adoption of children should be adoption of sons. We become children of God by this new birth, the blood of Christ. We become sons of God by adoption. We adopt it. The latter is a legal term. The latter is a legal term, all right? The latter is a legal term. We are legally adopted as sons and daughters via the blood of Christ, the sacrifice of the cross. You have to feed on it. Lie down in the night when everybody's asleep. Lay out there, close your eyes, and feed on these truths. Your life will begin to change. You, you, are, you are going to begin to transcend that emotionalism where the vast majority of Christians live. It's better to feel. It's better to know. People are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You know it's in the Bible. But how many of us, of us have trained ourselves to meditate, mutter, 
to regurgitate, to digest truth, to, to close your eyes and allow scripture after scripture to fill your soul with these truths. I belong to God. I remember that song we used to sing, I belong to the God of the mountain. I belong to the God of the sea. I belong to the God of the universe, and he belongs to me. I belong to the God of the mountain. I belong to the God of the sea. I belong to the God of the universe, and he belong to me. Do you really know that? Sister Bernard, do you know that? You are his. The same way you look at your children or your loved ones with love in your eyes. That's how we look at him. He loves us. Remember, remember we looked at Psalm 139? How we think about us? Go back and read that. You think of this God as a lover. He loves his children. He loves his kids. He wants us to know that we, we are su subjects of his love. He bought us through the blood of his son and make us his very own sons and daughters. Let's look at a few scriptures. 8.26. Let's see. We want to look at these scriptures. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Let me get Pastor Stephen will be our first reader. And then I want, I want to engage others. I want to ask Esther will be my second reader. Let me use one of the men. Alaric, are you there? Or uh, if Alaric there, show your hand. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Good, good. Right. So I'll have you do some reading. We have to use the men. We don't want to leave the men hanging. But Pastor Stephen will be the first. And you all write the scriptures down. Now we are looking at the doctrine. We established the definition. Um, the Pastor, yes. Romans chapter what? Romans chapter 8, verses 15. Romans chapter 8, Thank verses you. 15. Everybody, Pastor Stevens, could you lead us through the reading of Romans chapter 8, 15? After that, I'm going to ask Krista, or rather, let me get Alaric. Alaric, you would read Romans chapter 8 and 23. Romans 8, 23. After that, Krista, you would read Romans chapter 9 and verse 4. Pastor Stephen will be our first reader. Romans chapter yes. 8 and verse 15. Everybody, okay, and, and find Romans those scriptures. Yeah. Romans 8 Rome, and verse Romans 8 and 15 and 15, 15. And that would read, it would read, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father. Yeah. <laughs> but but as in, read the verse before that. Read, read 14 and 15. 15. Okay, 14 good. and 15. Everybody, 14 and 15. Verse, ahead, 14, verse, verse 14 would read, for yes. as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Right. For so you have... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go on, go on. For okay, you, and go 15 on, would say, go ahead, for, go ahead. for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Abba, Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> yes. Daddy, Daddy. Uh, uh, let me just read that in another version. And you know, I've been training some of you, as we've been doing on Saturdays. Read these verses in different versions. I'm going to read it in the Passion Version. And hear how the passion, no, no, let me get the passion. Uh, come out of this and get the TPT. 
which is the Passion Version, 14 and 15. And it says, the mature children of God are those who are moved, that's verse 14, by the impulse of the Holy Spirit. Verse 15, and you did not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough, of never being good enough. But you have received, here this one, the spirit of full acceptance enfolding you into the family of God and you will never feel often for as he rises up Within us, our spirit join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father. We are adopted sons of God. Let me see what the, King, what the New Living Translation says. The New Living says in verses 14 and 15, for all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. One thing we know now that we have become children of God, we have received the Spirit of God who is responsible for making this truth a reality. Without the Holy Ghost, this will just be information. Emotionalism can help you. The Holy Spirit will take the Word of God and make it come alive. Without the Spirit, that's why the Bible says, no man could come unto the Father unless the Spirit of God draws him. Jesus told the woman, um, Nicodemus, when they were talking about being born again, he said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. With all the Word of God and the Spirit of God, man cannot get saved. We need the Spirit and the Word of God to bring about this experience, right? So the New Living Translation says, for you have not received the spirit of bond, I don't know, let me read words. 14, yeah, yeah, 14, yes. Yeah. For all who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit of God make the, us know that we are children of God. Only the Holy Ghost can make this a reality. Now, what's, um, 15 says in the New Living Translation. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fear, fearful slaves. The Holy Ghost will not make you a slave. The Holy Ghost is not there to torment you. He's not there to bring condemnation on you. He's there to make you understand who you are, whose you are. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, here it is, you receive God's spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, when he adopts you as his own children. Now, now, not before, now we call him Abba, Father. The Holy Ghost makes the reality of God as a father become real to you. God wants us to know that we are his very own sons and his very own daughters. Sons and daughters. This is one of the scriptures we, we look at. Let's look at the other scripture. Let's look at another scripture. So the first one, as the seed we read it. Yeah. Other one is to uh, Alaric. Am I right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go right ahead. Romans chapter Verses 8. 23. And, 23. and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So here we see in verse 23, and we believers also grow. As though we have the Holy Spirit within us. Let me just put this in the English and I'll read it from here. But not only they, that's all of nature, 
all of nature is on its tippy toes awaiting the manifestation of, of, of the sons of God. Verse 23 says, not only they, not only nature, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the spirit. See, the Holy Ghost is given to the church, right? We have the first fruit of the spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. In other words, we are saved. At conversion of a spirit man became born again. This body is the left out one because it's still dying. It's mortal. It's corruptible, right? It's going to die one day. But in the coming world to come, all of nature, all even we be grown, Lord, when you feel the pain in your body and you feel an environment filled with sin, you become overwhelmed. But we are looking forward for the full adoption to manifest not only in our spirit, but in our bodies. And this is what Romans chapter uh, 823 is saying. Not only nature, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the spirit. The spirit is given to the church. Given as a church. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves. We long for it. Waiting with bated breath for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. Let me just read this in the living and see what the living says here about this verse 23. Uh, it's good to always look at the a quick glimpse at the other version. Let me see, I can just put it down. 23. In the living says, and we us and we believers also grow, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us, as a foretaste of future glory. The Holy Ghost is that is that foretaste, you know. When we taste the presence of God, it's just a foretaste of what is to come. If the Holy Ghost is so powerful and so sweet, could you imagine what awaits us? So the Holy Ghost is a foretaste. We believers also grow, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as adopted children. When we come into the full maturity of this we st it starts here we are growing from glory to glory but then we enter into the full right the full manifestation out of an environment away from an environment that's polluted and fallen and wicked and vile could you imagine what it's going to be like but don't put it for the off for the future we can begin to grow in power and grow in consciousness and grow with boldness and begin to enjoy your status as a son. When you look up there for as an Abba, I'm adopted, I'm your very own. Do you know the father loves you just as he loved Jesus? Just as he loved his own son. He loved you and I. Let me read in the Passion Version, verse 23. The Passion Version says this this way. Where's verse 23? It's lost somewhere. Oh, yeah. And it's not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruit or the foretaste of the Spirit also inwardly grown as we passionately long to experience our full status as God's sons and daughters, including our physical body being transformed. At the rapturing of the church, our bodies will put on immortality. This corruption will put on incorruption and we will enter into 
the full manifestation of the sons of God. But that manifestation starts the moment you got saved. We ought to begin to grow and develop. Don't just wait for the future. Start walking in that dimension. Start opening your mouth and start declaring. Start meditating on these truths. Get these scriptures and start declaring, I am the very son of God, a daughter of God. I'm a child of God. The king of the universe is my father. You know, some people say, I wish I had a billionaire as a father. The God of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth is your very own father. You see, we are so carnal. We, don't know, we do not know the power of that. And that is why meditation is so important. It's important. Let's feed on this truth. Let's go to the other scripture. So, well, let me just read it out in the Passion. So it says in the Passion, it's not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruit of the Spirit also inwardly grown as we passionately long to experience our first status as God's sons and daughters, including our physical bodies being transformed. Verse 24, for this is the hope of our salvation. But hope means, means that we must trust and wait for what is not. I wanted to read verses. But okay, we read both 23 and 24. So those are the scriptures that we looked at here. We, we're moving to Krista. Krista Romans chapter eight, chapter 9 and verse 4. So we are adopted. We're seeing these scriptures telling us we are adopted sons and daughters of God. Go ahead, Krista. Verse, read verses uh, 4. Romans 9, 4. Okay, Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. And it's again, the, the, the Israelites were given the status, but they walked away from it. They walked away from it. This has now become the heritage of the church, of Gentiles, because the Jews. Christ came onto them, they rejected it. They said, we want, a, we want a criminal. We want Barabbas. We don't believe it. Who is that guy? We know who, who he is. We know the home he came from. One, in one instance, they almost called Jesus a bastard. Who is your father? They were laughing at him because the talk in the village was, because they heard that Mary was uh, the claim that, that she was um, the child of, he was the child of the Holy Ghost and he was conceived by the Spirit. So it, it, it was a, one of those things that they had going on in, on him. You understand? But we here we're seeing in verse 4, Romans 9, 4, who are, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant, the promise, and the giving of the law, and the service of God. Let me just do, let me do something here. I, I want to put that in a context. Let me look at Romans chapter. You all follow pastor here. Go to Romans, that same Romans chapter nine. Let me get it located here. Context is very important. Romans nine. And I want to read from verse one. There's a context we need to put this in. And I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. And it says, with Christ as my witness, Paul is talking. I speak with utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Ghost will confirm it. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief. For my people, that's a Jewish people, my Jewish brothers and sisters, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. I love the Jewish people. They are the people of Israel. 
chosen to be God's adopted children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenant with them and give them the law. He gave them the privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob are their ancestors and Christ himself was an Israelite as far as his human nature is concerned. And he is God, the one who rules over everything and is will and is worthy of eternal praise amen verse 6 follow me well then well then hear him has god failed to fulfill his promise to israel no for not all who are born into the nation of israel are truly members of god's people being descendants of abraham doesn't make them truly abraham's children for the scripture said, say, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Though Abraham had another, had other children too. This means that Abraham's physical descendants are not necessarily children of God. Only the children of the promise are considered to be Abraham's children. Only the children of promise. Look verse 9. For God had promised, I will return about this time next year. And Sarah will have a son. So one of the things that we, we are pushing here is the context. The Jews were walking in as adopted, in that adopted status, but they walk away from it. That adoption, adoption is now given to us of the church of Christ. We are adopted. All these scriptures telling you, listen to me, folks. God wants every one of us to develop that consciousness. Yeah, Pastor adopted Thompson. Sons. Yeah, go ahead, man of God. Uh, where did you read from? I read from the New Living Translation, Romans chapter nine, and I took it from verse one. We were okay. just we were only we, we were only looking at verse four, but okay. I wanted to put. I wanted to put verse 4 in the whole context oh, of okay, the conversation okay. Paul was having. Thanks. Where you're talking, talking about the Jews, they were the ones who were called into this, they walked away from it, and the whole idea of adoption. God adopted the Jews for himself. You know? He said, I want to make you a nation of priests, a kingdom, a holy and a righteous kingdom. You see that in, in Exodus chapter 19. But they denied Christ. When they say away with him, that was it. And everywhere Paul went, they persecuted him. At Lystra and Derby, they stirred up the people in there to stone Paul. Everywhere he had gone, they pursued him every city, country he went in. They had people there going after him. Paul had a spoken and you don't want to hear me, I'll go to the Gentiles. We have to raise our both hands that the Jews did not receive Christ. This status is ours now. It's ours. This is ours. Okay. So we look at, uh, let's look at Galatians chapter 5, 6, 5 and 6. Galatians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, 5 and 6. And it is always good to read a verse or two before it. So let's all turn to Galatians. We are still on the subject. We are looking at what? The status of sonship, adopted sons. That is a powerful teaching. Who are we adopted sons and daughters of God? So in Galatians chapter five, chapter four, forgive me. And we can take, uh, let's take it from, Verses four to six. Four to six. Okay, let's take it from one. Let's take it from one. It's always good to put a scripture you want to look at, put it in its context, and then it gives more light. It gives context to it. All right. We are really looking at verses five and six 
of Galatians chapter 4. But we're reading from verse 1 to put those two verses, 5 and 6, in its context. All right? I really want you to understand what I'm doing. So verse 1 says, Pastor Stevens, I want you to read it first, verses 1 to 6 in the okay. King James Version. Yeah, in the ahead. King James Version. Okay, good. So Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 1, and this would read, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors uh -huh. until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. And verse 4 right. reads, But when the fullness of time was come, God yeah. sent forth his son, wow. made of a woman, uh -huh. made under the law, uh -huh. to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adopt adoption Ooh. of sons. <laughs> and because you are sons, God has yes. sent for the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Doing what? Abba, Father. Amen. Who are, your who are us that? The aid of the spirit helping us to understand this truth. Just don't listen to me. Alaric and Maxwell, Pastor Stephen. Who are the other men we have here? Any other men? Uh, tonight we don't have Brother Tony on tonight. But we thank God for the ladies. But we want the men to get the truth in your spirit. Alaric, you are going to be one of the young men in the global ministry as well as Maxwell. A lot to work along with Pastor Steve. This doctrine must get into your spirit. This truth must grip you. The, the message of adoption. We were looking at the message in verse 4, dealing with call to what? Holiness and unblameableness. That's a powerful doctrine. Feed on these. Don't let these truths pass. Take those truths. Inculcate. Digest. Regurgitate. Let it become. Create an image into your mind. That's how you create. You, new, you renew your mind. You renew the image of who you are, whose you are in Christ. Do you know many Christian people still want to feel something? Let me just read this for you in the New Living Translation from verses 1 to 6. Think of it this way. You see the importance of different versions. If a father dies, get the reason, and leaves an inheritance for his young children. Yes, yeah, that's in Old Testament, Old Testament and New Testament time. Those children are not much better off than the slaves until they grow up. Even though they actually own everything your father had. You see, it's just like you, 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 you grew up in a royal family. But you are a child. There are a lot of benefits you have, but you can't enjoy because you're a child. You have the slaves who tend to you, who clean you, who wash you, who sometimes could even discipline you. Huh? That's the imagery that Paul is bringing to us here. Hear what he says, right? Even though they actually own everything their father had. had. Look at verse 2 in the New Living. They have to obey their guardians, even the slaves. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. Right? It, this is the analogy. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual 
principles of this world. We are under the attack of the enemy. The enemy invaded us. We live under the bondage of sin, right? But when, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Through Christ, we have been adopted into the very family of God. Verse 6 says, and because we are his children, who are we now, according to verse 6, open your mouth and say, make it person, I am a child of God. Look at verse 6. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son, where? Into our spirit, which means our heart. Why did he do it? Prompting us to call out, Abba, Abba, Daddy, Daddy, Father. Let me tell you something. If the Holy Spirit don't do this, this will only be a scripture word. That's a big difference between children of God, you hear me? And a man with, who goes to a university or a secular person who opens the Bible and read it. Without the spirit of God, you will never understand the revelation of the truth that we are sons and daughters of God. You will never understand. You will not understand. The Holy Spirit makes that possible makes that possible. And look at verse 7. Just look at verse 7. Let's add that as part of the context. Read, read with me. Now, now, you are no longer a slave. Wow. Pastor Steve, do you hear that? We used to be slaves of sin. Colossians 1.13 says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us that's a poor, poor um, thing. It should be transferred. Who has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us where? Into the kingdom of God's dear son. You have to know, Alaric. You have to know, Maxwell. You have to know, Sister Aggie. You have to know, Annie. You have to know, Susan and Joyce and everyone else here this evening, the 14 of us. According to the scripture verse, now you are no longer a slave, a servant. You are no longer a slave, but God's own child. That's a living translation. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir, his heir. Pastor Stephen, what's the meaning of an heir? What's the meaning of an heir, Pastor Stephen? If I, if I could remember, heir, in other words, you're like the heir to the throne, you're the next person in line. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. An heir, let, let, I have this phone, so let me ask my phone, you know, I could give you a okay. What's the meaning of an heir? And I'll read it, what it says. Not an e -E -I. <laughs> Uh, well, let me put it over. What's the meaning of an heir? H E I R. I'm not giving my one here. But it actually means a joint possessor mm -hmm. of okay. the fortune, the riches, the wealth of your father, in this case, God. We are joint, and we're going to see that in other scriptures. That we are co possessor, a co inheritor to all that God has. That is amazing. A joint heir, a co possessor of the fortunes of heaven. That's why we saw in verse 3 of. Um, he, uh, of uh, he, 
Ephesians 1. We are blessed with every spiritual, all spiritual blessings where in the heavenly places where in Christ, because we are now adopted. We are now brought into the family of God. And we have now become adopted. The Holy Spirit enforce that truth, make it real. And now through the aid of the Spirit, we can say Abba. But, and when you say Abba, you feel the connection. You know, sometimes a child can be adopted and they hear all the abuse. The, the children who are the, the real biological kids are given greater favor, are treated with more love, more respect. Right? And they know it. You are adopted. You might get some scraps. You might get some belongings. But here we are a joint possessor and heir, a co-inheritor with God, with the Lord Jesus. We are his very own children to the fortunes of the Father. When the church, listen to me, Pastor Steve, what do you think of this? Tell me, Pastor Steve, give me a feedback. What do you think about what you're hearing here? It, it, it means, Pastor Thompson, that, you know, everything that God possess, that we, uh, we possess those things too. Yes. We, it, it, um, uh, all the favor, uh, as, as you were just saying, we are not poor ones in this life. Sure, we, right. we, sure. we, we are rich beyond measure. And yes. I think that was his, 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 when he was speaking, study on the Ephesians. Yes. Is that the Ephesians? Is when when you look at the the the, the um the the commentary behind it, the yes. the, the the Ephesians were living like spiritual paupers, Come and on. he was telling okay. them that they were really rich beyond measure. Beyond that measure. we yes. are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. Yes. Everything that 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 Christ that uh, 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 that God has. We have also possessed all of those things. That's Come that's on. who we are. That's what it is, preacher. That's what it yes. is. That's what it is. That's what it is. And saints of God on tonight, we're going to pause at this point. We're going to go through some more scriptures next week. We have a good bit more. I want us, I'm going to give you enough because this is a doctrine. The reason I'm going to go through these scriptures, we only covered, we only covered how much tonight? We covered how many scriptures? Um, we look at Ephesians chapter 1 to 5. Yeah. Romans, right? Romans 8.15. We look at Rome, um, we look at Romans chapter 8.23. We look at Romans 9.4. Galatians chapter 4. We read from verses 1 all the way down to 6 in the different versions, right? Next week when we come, we are going to look at many more. And why we are going to do it is because if we are going to build a doctrinal base on the principles in the book of Ephesians. We're not going to glossing over and just, I want you to let these scriptures sink into your spirit. Feed on. Feed on meditate on it. In closing, I just open for um, the floor. Anyone who wants to make a comment, want to make a statement, want to give uh, a... Pastor Thompson, what you, ahead, were, what you were saying there previously is true. You yeah. know, you can hear these things for year in, year out, go over, yeah. but unless you don't study this yeah. and really meditate on it, and it does, if it doesn't become a part of your spirit, it will be just like yeah. words in the air, you know. Unless you meditate on it, you study it, then you really realize True. the spirit of God would use it and put it, and you realize exactly what God is saying that we are have been adopted. Yes. Amen. That yes, everything that Christ has, we have, and and you yes. know we 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 are blessed beyond measure. So yes, it's sir. really and truly studying this and committing it to spirit. Yes. Preach, preacher, that is where God is calling. Because a lot of people, you know, you are very blessed. There are many churches jump, hollow, kick, 
tambourine singing, every service people laying hand on that person. To, to, we want to God to bless you tonight. Listen, be blessed with everything. That's what we're going into. Co inheritors. The Huyos to see her. The Huyos sons, daughters. Your prince, princesses. God called. Co inheritor with Christ, with God. We're going to go into more deeper depth next week. Just as we look into those scriptures dealing, we are called to holiness and blamelessness. Now we're going to look at what it means to be called a son, a daughter, a child of God. And it must not be an emotion. I felt it. I, I was praying and I really felt, no, no, no. God wants you to know, not just feel. He wants you to know. People are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You won't have to run nobody down for somebody to palm your hand on your head and declare blessing on you. Yeah, a lot of big preachers going all over to Africa to get people impartation of, of other men. I would not waste my money to do that. You know who you have? The Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. And you're running around for somebody to lay hands on you, running down a preacher. Because you do not know who you are. And we're going to build on this. Alaric, tell me something. What do you think? What is it saying to you? If you're there, I know some of you are back. Go ahead. Um, yeah, it is true. It, it brings about a, a great revelation in terms of, of just understanding it alone is, is a big part of it. And living it is our next another sure, big sure. part of it also. Sure. So it, it 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 brings about boldness also when you know who you are sure. and a, a sort of confidence knowing that you know God has given you this inheritance. So things not things which yeah. bother us now, not supposed to bother us like financially or or sure. sickness or anything like that, not supposed to be bothering us. So it, it brings about a confidence and it also brings about a, a greater understanding of who you yes. are and how you are supposed to perform. Yeah, come on very well, very well. That's what this is all about. Anybody else as we close? We come in for a landing. Go ahead, I see you, Richard. You can unmute, go ahead, take your time. I'm waiting on you. Sister Bonacci doesn't miss the opportunity. Go right ahead. <laughs> Um, All right, I had my Pastor. Yes. Um, like the word when you read when you read the word, right? Mm -hmm. It 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 can it, it is food to your soul. It is like mm -hmm. it is food to your soul. So when you when you feed on it, like like okay, say I I'm using this as a reference, like you sit down in your in in your um kitchen on your yeah. dining. Table eating a plate of food. That is how the world is. Definitely. You feed on it. That's what it is. That's what it is. You, you take it like if it's a plate of food that you're eating and, <laughs> and, and the way it will move and especially if the food tastes nice. It's sure right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. My dear, that is the truth. Yes. When when the word of God begins to do that to you, you know you're going somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's why the Apostle Paul traveled. You study the book of Acts. You think he was just running around to lay hands on people to get healed? That mm -hmm. happened. But listen to what Paul was saying. As a, as a, if you study the book of Acts, you'll see how Paul loved teaching and preaching. He spent three years in Ephesus. And the Bible says, so mightily good the word of God. Yeah. You know what's killing people? There is no word. They're hearing scripture. Oh, it was a good word. It was a good sermon. I get blessed and I put it down and walk away. There's no feeling on it. There's no masticating, yeah. chewing on it. Meditation yeah. is what makes, takes it from the mind and bring it into your spirit. With the aid of the Holy Amen. Ghost, you come Amen. before the spirit and say, Holy Ghost, let this truth burn in me. I want this truth to become real. When this truth begins to take 
possession of you like a, as a sister. But I said, a plate of food, it begins to nourish your spirit. You know, when you begin to see yourself as a joint heir with Christ and God, that all the possession of heaven is at your disposal. And when Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, in the same way, he stood. And when demons saw him, they scream out, Don't torment us. When we begin to grow up, that will begin to happen to us. Amen. You wouldn't have to run on a prayer and fast. When the truth begins to deposit depth in our heart, and you begin to grow into that maturity, it begins to flow into your spirit, it moves from the pages of the Bible into your spirit and take on flesh and bone and sinew and muscles mm -hmm. begin to flow through you then the word comes alive anybody can read the bible and have a mental apprehension of it mm -hmm. it's different when the spirit of god makes you know you see how much in that text we see how the spirit is one who make the revelation so real so we can say Abba, Abba. Daddy, daddy, I'm gonna saying it. It ricocheting in his spirit. It ricocheting in his spirit. I am really a son of God. You begin to feel the impact, and that is important. Thank yeah. you, sister, sister Bernard. You can put. You can. You can. You can um, mute yourself now. Thank you so much as always for your contribution. Anyone else as we close? If you have something burning on your heart, don't hold it back. Don't express it. Anyone else in closing? All right. Okay. Going once, going twice, going three times. God bless you. And I am going to have a word of prayer and then turn over to Pastor Stevens. Father, thank you this evening for taking your living word and make it come alive. In our heart. Spirit, I am asking you to take this truth and burn it into our hearts. I'm asking that this truth will not just be a doctrine in the Bible. Let it become flesh and blood and bone and sinew. Let it become a living truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just before I forget, next week, Wednesday, I'll be out for five days um, holidays. So, past this evening, it would be nice if you can take me, you can take the session next week and you can probably go over some of what we've covered. I think um, so, yes. Yeah, all right, yeah. Richard? Yes, and, we'll and, do that. And, yeah.